I want to uh, thank you for spending time with me today. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Teeny, tiny, little spaces. This is a tiny space. The pods. The pod people are coming. I could get some of these. But I could. My fear is that <laughs> I would keep the bins and I would just add more things on. I didn't have as much in here, too, because I kind of added a few things. The neighbors in my head are having a discussion right now, so. <laughs> um, hey, y'all. How are you? Me, I'm doing really good. This is my last day in Tucson. And I want to talk today about teeny, tiny, very small spaces. How to survive in one. I like small spaces. I've always, as a, even as a child, my mom could put over a blanket, over a, a card table. And I would be so happy. My girlfriend and I, we would go under there, crawl under there. We'd make a little home under there and we'd be there all day long. So I do like small spaces. It reminds me of being in a cave or a clubhouse or just something that's uh, kind of cool and you're kind of private in there. So I like a small space, but I know some of you have mentioned either on comments or on the Facebook group that you're not really keen on a small space and you're not even sure if you could even deal with living this lifestyle. There are, you know, have you heard about those pods that are in California that young people are kind of going for? They're renting these, uh, they're called pods. And what I believe that my minivan is about the size of a pod. I've seen them and I'll show that here, a picture of some pods. But I do believe that my minivan here is about that size. It's a bed and of course then they'll have like their pillows here and here's the end of it and then the opening is down there the opening and they they could shut it there's probably a door I haven't seen how they shut it but yeah and then over here are shelvings where they can keep their things there's a common area for the bathroom and for eating and like a, a living room where they can you know get together and chat somebody out there whoop <laughs> I'm just checking um I'm at the park this is my last day just side note and I'm um, moving on I'm gonna start moving towards the east coast so yeah I'm gonna meet Max Max and I were gonna meet up in a city and uh he's gonna start traveling but he's in another area right now he's in Lake Havasu and I'm in Tucson so we both have the same amount of time to get there but we're gonna yeah four hours and um so we meet up when we get there so I'll be waiting for you Max yeah so teeny tiny little spaces this is a tiny space and this thing if you were in an SUV how tiny and teeny it would be um, but I know a lot of you do it. I don't think I could do an SUV or a Ranger or something like that. I like the minivan and I'm really happy with it. And I don't know if I would ever go with anything larger. I just got a message and you asked me if I didn't have to pay for the, for the, um, the apartment or the home and I had enough money for it. Would I still do this full time? Well, I know I'm all sorry <laughs> I know I'm fidgety aren't I um, I guess because I know I'm gonna go get it back on the road well I don't know how full-time I would be but sure I would have a place why not if it was free of course okay you know yeah I would do it because it would be a great place and it would probably be in Tucson where I would park everything because I'm in Tucson quite a bit I come here in the in the late fall, just starting to when it starts to cool off in Arizona, and then I'm here in the spring. So I'm really here like four months out of the year. So of course I would. It'd be a great place to park my things, wouldn't it? And then I could switch out my clothes, my winter clothes and my summer clothes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So yeah, I would, but um, I would still, and it'd be a great place to shower and I would probably sleep there off and on but I don't know I really like my minivan so I do like teeny tiny spaces that's the point one aspect of a teeny tiny space 
is knowing how to organize it. I have organized my minivan so many times. When I first got started here, I didn't have these right here or my back area that I call my garage. I was all the way back. I had everything all the way back. So I really had about this much more space going back. But right here, I had, I brought one of my futons with me. It was a twin futon, kind of a small, it wasn't really, I had different sizes. I was kind of a futon person. I had different sizes. In fact, my bed was, um, it was on a futon frame, but it was a futon. And then in my living room, I had a couple of futons that I could fold up into chairs or fold out. And those were the ones, one of them I got rid of. It was very, it was very thick. But the thinner one I had, and what I'd do is I'd fold it three ways. One, and then two. Fold it up, keep my pillows there. And at night I would fold it up, but I went width way. And yeah, I think it's only like five feet across. Five feet, one inch is one, five, three. It was really hard to stretch out. But everything was different. And I didn't have as much in here too because I kind of added a few things as I go. Like... Oh, power stations. At first, I didn't even have a power station. I didn't even, when I first got started, I didn't even have a fan. Um, that came later. <laughs> I did go to Walmart. I was so hot. It was really hot that year, and I went to Walmart, and I bought one of those gray ones that fold up, and then the thing comes out so it can stand up. Oh, no. And it was battery. D batteries, they're expensive. And so I've really evolved over five years. Um, now it's starting to go towards six. I've really evolved. But uh, it didn't have good power either. So I have tweaked out so many things. Well, one reason I wanted to talk about this teeny tiny business and surviving inside of it for the long haul as a full-timer is because a minivan leads this nomad life Facebook group. Go on it. It is so active. We have everyday people are posting pictures of what they've done with the rig or what they're doing to get ready for it. Or just comments or posting things of where they are. A lot of you are part-time nomads. You're getting your feet wet or that was your decision. You want to be a part-time nomad and nothing wrong with that. Oh my gosh. I think that makes sense. And I advocated in my book, um, How to Live in a Minivan, The Minivan Leeway. Yeah, the book. Get it if you haven't. Uh, great resources, great list, yes. And great suggestions. And some of them I'm going to talk about right now in, the, in this um, time with you. Well, one thing that I've noticed in some of your pictures on the Facebook group is you have a lot of decorations going on. That It looks beautiful. It really does. And when I first started... I did it too. But as a full-timer now, oh, I had to scale back because those things were driving me insane. They were in my way. I could not deal with them. They were just in my way. But I remember one thing that really taught me the lesson was I, I did paintings um, throughout my life, oil paintings. And one particular one was my favorite. And I mean, it, <laughs> it was a painting, yeah. I don't know what I was thinking, but I wanted it. I wanted it in here. And so I would park it or I'd park it over there. I found that all I was doing was bumping it and I didn't want it to get hurt. It was just, it was teaching me a lesson. There's certain things that I can't have. And I, I know it was really big, but I think even a small one would get in my way. Even a small painting would just get in my way. So everything is at this point sort of utilitarian and the only decoration that I have left in all seriousness in my van are these flowers here and the reason I can tolerate these is because they're out of my way it's over here I wouldn't be able to do it over here because my sliding door is here my mirror here is at, and I have other things that I need but here I don't open this door ever because my dresser's here. I got this bin down here and I store things like my butane, vinegar water, etc. I do keep my fire, stops fires fast. There you go. 
What I found is that these leaves and the flowers, they sort of hide this a little bit. So it, 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 it's a dual purpose. It's nice to look at. It makes me feel like I've got something going on, right? And I do have the new yellow and I really like this. I got this at Walmart. It was only $2.99. And I got this at Target. Target has really nice things. A um, little bit more expensive, but they do have nice things. They're buyers by very uh, more elegant things than I believe you find at Walmart. So this is what I, but the, and starting to fade, but I've had this going on six years now. But this is a piece, this is a flower or leaves. Two, three, and four. These are some extra leaves. So I have four things going on here. And I kind of park them inside my, um, I kept the seat belt here and I kind of park it there and then I've got it kind of um, twisty tied here so they're not going to all fall over. But yeah, this is, this is my decoration. This is about it. Now, I do have this. These are these, these are the flowers, the roses. I got these at Ikea, but it has a dual purpose. I park my lip gloss here. Yeah. And if I want to put another drink on there, I just put this over here that I've got for my drink here. That's it for decorations. That's it. I do have my little puppy here, but I don't know. He doesn't get in my way. <laughs> yeah. Because I can just park him over there at night when I take my pillows and my blankets down. I guess this is sort of a decoration. I... I cover up so it doesn't just I just don't look at my pillows okay but the point is that if you have a lot of decorations in your rig and it's teeny tiny like a minivan or an SUV yeah it's gonna get in your way and eventually if you're a full-timer you're gonna scale that down I just I guarantee you're probably gonna do it I mean maybe not but for me, it just seemed practical. I had to get rid of so much. I, I couldn't make this like this big decoration. So I use other things for decorations. Like that's why I have like this light is utilitarian, but it's decorative, right? This is decorative. It holds something that I kind of need in there. Yeah. I try to make what I buy then I try to make nice. Like this is sort of like a decoration, right? That I got my cover up those clear yeah so I just believe that that's a good idea so I do see postings from y'all on the Facebook group and I think oh wow I can always tell who's a full-timer and who's a part-timer um, and we all just love to see your decorations and how you've got it all set up but for full-time I'm not so sure that it would be practical so another step is to decide in the very beginning what is necessary. You're going to have to decide what you truly need because the more things you bring in that you don't need and that if they're going to get in your way and you might never need them because if you're in a teeny tiny space, you need your space for what's truly important. I am sure that those California pod people, <laughs> the pods, the pod people are coming. Um, they have to really decide what's important inside their shelves that are lined up here and lined up on that side. I mean, they have to decide because the more stuff they've got shoved in there, here's the problem. The more stuff that's in there, in order to get anything, they have to pull everything out to find out what's behind it. And that can get old after a while. Yeah. So the pod people are minimalist and you almost have to be a minimalist to live in a tiny space like this. One of you suggested that I actually do a video on going through my things and getting rid of what I didn't need anymore. That was a really good idea. Actually, what I did was I went through everything when I was in Quartzsite and I was waiting to get the seats out of my new van here and I was still sleeping and living in my old 2006 Kia, the silver one. So I spent that whole week, because it took a week, I had to make an appointment. So I already had gone through everything and I had a bag going. And what I did was I called Rhonda, my friend, hey Rhonda, 
and she was traveling with a caravan not too far down the road. And I called her when I was done. I said, come get um, the stuff that I'm getting rid of. So, yeah. Um, so at least it went for a good cause. And she did say that um, only but a couple things were w within like 10 minutes, those things left. And that was at the point where I gave her, um, gave her onto my uh, cowboy boots. Okay. You know, that was one thing. I mean, it was in my way, those cowboy boots carrying too much things that I just wasn't using. And in order for you to know what is necessary, you can decide in the beginning what's necessary. But I guarantee within a year, you're going to go through again. You're going to go, I did not use this for a whole year. Why am I carrying this around? I don't want this. I don't need this. So making the decision in the beginning and maybe like a year later will help you survive being in such a small space because the more junk you're bringing with you the more you're going to feel crowded in you've got to give yourself some open space i mean this is this is my space and it's it's pretty large i mean i can survive this very well i park myself up watch a movie do my editing for me i definitely can survive in this teeny tiny space and i would say this is a very tiny living space compared to what most of america is living in now a lot of you might say well i would rather have something larger well i'm talking about surviving in a tiny space how small of a space do you think you can actually survive in now shout out to julie um, we've talked a few times about trying to help people and teach them to understand anything could happen down the road. I don't like to think about things like that. She thinks about it a little bit more than I do. But she said, Lee, we do need to kind of teach other people how to do this because things could go down. I know rents are going sky high. A lot of people have to leave their place. A lot of young people have to leave their place. So we're, we're actually suggesting maybe get yourself a minivan or an SUV while you can and kind of get it tricked out a little bit and do some practicing, kind of go on some uh, short trips and learn to see if you could do this and how you would be able to do it. There may be a time where you have to go small. So I'm just giving you some tips on how to do it and how to do it well so that you can survive. I mean, surviving and actually enjoying it. The next suggestion is choosing proper, um, proper containers for all of your possessions. Now I use my bins, I've got my bins here. And then I've got bins over there. See, I've got a table here and I can put my thing, I put my fan I put my um, humidifier and I've got my Jackery. And then I've got a bin here and underneath there's another bin. I mean, basically these are tables. I've got stuff here that I would need when I'm on the road and I'm driving that I can just pull this up and grab what I need. And then when I'm in here enjoying myself, I just put this over, because guess what? I like the blue and I really don't want to look at it all the time. I don't want to look at, I don't like clutter. So this is how one way I'm surviving in a teeny tiny space. What I do is I, um, I disguise clutter, but I can get it when I want to. How easy is that? Whoop. <laughs> it's pretty easy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And then I have what I've been doing with my shemogs is I put my shemogs on the bottom because this is plastic. I don't want everything rolling around on it. So I keep things up here that I need. My keys, lip gloss, Altoids. Yeah, things like that. Here, I keep my sunglasses. I've mentioned this just recently, I think, but we'll go over it again in case you haven't seen it. I keep all my sunglasses. It's a really nice box I got at the container store. And I keep my sunglasses in there. That way, if I'm coming through, oops, I forgot my sunglasses. I just come through the passenger door, open it up, and I can get right here and get it. Very easy. And I've got things in this bin that would, I, that it would be easy to access from the passenger door 
if I'm outside, like my headphones, if I want to listen um, to music and I'm walking, you know, things like that. Now the bin, what's in here is, <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff in here now. This was exclusively overflow for food. I don't carry as much food with me anymore. And I know Julie would disagree with that. Julie, you gotta have food. Um, I just don't, it's, it's hard on gas carrying the canned foods and things like that. So, um, but I've got all kinds of stuff in here, things that I can just kind of pop up. What I do with this, it's kind of, it's kind of bent right here, but I reach up and I reach in and I reach, yeah. I don't have to take the whole thing off. If I do need to get something way over here, then yeah, I have to take the jackery off. My fans, take this off, yeah. And then I've got another shamak here. But this is a nice table system, so I feel like I have a table. And I can actually, if I want to, I can actually sit down here. Now, why would I want to sit here? Sometimes what I do is I get out my yellow, uh, uh, collapsible sink it's plot you know it's rubber and it's collapsible and I fill it with water and then I actually soak my feet I just sit here on the phone and I can soak my feet so I can still sit here and use this sort of like a bench too if I need to it's good to use things for different for um, multiple uh, functions Let me turn this back on oh I want to tell you I did get another fan this is Opolar, but it's smaller. It's a six inch instead of a nine inch. I really like that. I thought that the smaller would be good and I love the blue. And you can, um, this one has little teeny tiny screws. So you can take the front off, wash the blades, they're plastic, wash the blades, put it back on. You know, let me get this going. This is a humidifier. I'm in Arizona and it's very dry. It hasn't rained in a while. It's very dry and it actually keeps me cooler if I can keep humidity going. As far, this is pretty easy too. You just, yeah. There we go. There you go. keeps it cool. It's not going to be as hot today here in Tucson, but tomorrow it's going sky high up again. And that's why I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm going up north. Yeah. So organization is another skill you need in order to survive a teeny tiny little pod place. Now I keep my clothes, my clothes are in here. And I do use this for decoration. Yeah, yeah. So tops and underwear, bottoms and miscellaneous and yeah, miscellaneous stuff in there. Yeah. This I would like to reorganize again, but I haven't found the proper um, containers for it. I'm still looking. I even went to the container store. They didn't have anything that would have worked for me. So I kind of keep organization here the best I can but I can still use this yeah you're right I don't like these plastic bins they kind of go they kind of sink in the middle so things like kind of go down but yeah it's not that horrible I guess because I haven't changed it yet another um first I want to talk about look at this I got a bunch of these in these were so popular right off the bat blue it's a blue design really a nice deep blue yeah i love this one yeah so i've got them on minivanlee.com net gators and i've got some on different collections going on too so please go there and check out the net gators and the arm gators and of course i've got the exercise videos too so go to minivanlee.com and check all of uh, all the things out there it's uh, and I kind of revamped it a little bit, put some new pictures up. My um, my feature picture on the website still had my 2006 silver uh, Kia. Well, I put I, I changed the photo, got got my faith up now. So 
One other way to do um, organize for survival in a teeny tiny place is to resist the clutter and the chaos. If there's a lot of clutter, it's going to create chaos and it's going to create it up here. A clean environment and organized is a clean mind also. I need to wear neck gaiters up here too. I bumped it. I bumped it bad. I bumped my cheek today too. Um, <laughs> I bumped my cheek really. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I won't. Even, I don't even want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> I know. I was rushing. Another thing, do don't rush um, when you're in a small space. Or I was actually outside. Okay. Enough of that. Chaos and clutter. I don't like it. I don't do well in chaos. I don't do well in clutter. So, what I have, that's why I think I have these here so I can put things inside. I know exactly what's in here. Here's a little um, pump too, like, uh, just, yeah, yeah. I keep that handy. I keep things handy in here. Like these are for my fairy lights, my little flashlights. Yeah, a little comb if I need it. Yeah, lighter. And here could like my hair stuff I can put in here. Yeah, it, it's important. And then I always keep this right here so I can clean off my glasses or my device. And what I can do is also I kind of keep this corner open so that I can put like if I'm having a drink, I don't have my tray out, I can put it here. But I've organized this. That way I know. Uh, where everything goes. If I had so much decorations going on, there'd be nowhere, um, no place to put things if I need it right now. I like to keep things open. Another thing too that I can put things on is here. Yeah. Like I keep my wipes right up here on these, the top of these three bins. So keep yourself organized. One way to keep clutter down is what you have to do is you have to put your things away right away. If you get it out, you got to put it away. Just put it away. Don't take the time to just sit it out. I have found that to be so too. And I actually sometimes have done it. It's like, oh, I don't feel like putting it away. But you know what? I, I, then the next thing that I leave out, it starts, I feel like I'm starting to close in. So and that's a really good tip. Put things away after you get them out. Another way to survive is to clean inside your rig often. I say once a week, you know, just take, um, get yourself some antibiotic wipes or just get a wipe and kind of wipe things down a little bit, you know, wipe, wipe the top of this, the top of this, watch it because this does get dusty, Ooh, green, it does get dusty. I clean this and then the sides here, oh, feels a little dusty. I think I need to do that. And over here, just kind of, and wipe down your, um, inside uh, at the front too oh now it's gonna oh it's gonna change colors on me um the steering wheel and the dashboard and just yeah and then periodically i i do clean my fan if it's starting to collect debris in there dust yeah so that's one way to do it too just spend the time once a week and just go over it what is it going to take five ten minutes another way to survive okay that's going to drive me crazy is you got to get outside. You can't just be in here all the time. Uh, the pod people in California, they don't just stay in their pod all the time. They get out, they go to the bathroom, they um, go into the common living area. Yeah, and talk to their friends and things like that. So you got to get outside. You can't just sit in your in your van. Now, a lot of people, what a lot of nomads, I've seen them. I know some, <laughs> and you're sitting in your front seat too much. Um, that's really not overly healthy. So you got to get outside and you take your chair outside and go sit out there and go enjoy, go for a walk, uh, whatever, go sightsee, whatever you need to do. Um, and then another thing too, is to survive it. You have to be social. Like I mentioned this, the pod people in California, they get out and they go into the common area where there's uh, seats and it's like a living room. Yeah. But then they've got their, their place where they can go to be alone and be secluded and isolated if they want to have their quiet time. But so 
make sure that you're socially connected. That's one way you can survive a teeny tiny space. Um, make your friends and have your family so you can FaceTime with them. Uh, whatever, whatever app you use, you can use uh, Signal. I don't use WhatsApp anymore. They have a lot of security issues, but I do use Signal and I use Messenger to keep in um, contact with my friends and with my family. And that's gonna help you survive. Okay, another very, very important aspect of surviving. We are made of energy. You want to be in the right mindset. If you are, if you're ungrateful for what you have and you feel like you've been cheated in life or why am I in this small teeny tiny space? By being grateful for what you have, it just gives you a whole new mindset and you're going to be happier. You're going to be um, wanting to be more loving towards other people. Yeah. Uh, so a mindset is very important. I recommend, well, you know, if you're, if you're Christian, um, you want to, um, your meditation may be prayer. You want to be in prayer. You want to talk to the Lord. Yes. If you're not, you might, um, and, and I meditate and I'm still a Christian. So, um, meditation, some Christians are against meditation. I, I think, <laughs> I don't know, uh, but I meditate. I'm a Christian and I meditate. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. I have a big discussion going on. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the neighbors in my head are having a discussion right now. So, <laughs> um, but I am a Christian and I meditate and I, I've been meditating every morning and I get in, it gives me a good mindset on where I'm at and how I see my future. You know, I got rid of that. I'm all about the future and I like to create my own future with my energy. And so I meditate on my visions and I vision what my future looks like. What does my life look like? What do I want my life to be? And it's not all about material things, I promise. Um, I have been criticized on that. Just, oh, well, you, God will give you what, no, I'm just not talking about material things. I'm talking about um, where I see myself mentally, psychologically, and I'll meditate on being a more loving person, um, creativity, things like that. If you can meditate and have visions going on on how you want your life to be and you're in a small space well I like being in a small space and if you like being in a small space too you probably are going to do very well with this if you want this lifestyle and you're not overly prepared for a teeny tiny space you can get in the mindset yeah if you let's say this is just a scenario let's say that your senior you're not so crazy about small spaces throughout your lifetime. And, but you need to get into a smaller space and what you can afford is a SUV or a minivan. Well, you may have to get in the right frame of mind for it, but that's what you can afford. And that is your survival. So you're not only gonna survive well, but you're gonna survive very well in this teeny tiny space. I also want to mention that as far as like storage goes, what about a carrier on the top of your roof? There's a lot of things that can go in there. Um, I know I might actually go to that in a little while. Um, I might do that. Now, I do have my solar panel up there, but I would go with what Glenna, hey Glenna, um, and put, move my solar panel over towards the front and then have my carrier um, in the back so I can still have my solar going on, yeah. Well, that was another little tip. And I could get some of these, but I could, my fear is that <laughs> I would keep the bins and I would just add more things on. <laughs> so yeah, that's a little scary, but yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for spending time with me, everybody. I love you guys so much. And like I said, go to minivanlee.com for um, really cool um neck gaiters. The reason I like these neck gaiters is because you remember in the 60s, we all wore chokers, didn't we? I still have a few. 
um, chokers. Well, these are sort of like that. It's kind of like a 60s thing, isn't it? Kind of makes me feel young. And, and yeah, remember when we were young, uh, teenage girls, and we had our chokers on, and or even um, the young adults. Well, I like the neck gaiters. It's sort of like uh, a, uh, a, a 2000 <laughs> um, uh, choker thing, yeah. So, but why these? Because the other neck gaiters I found, they just sort of sag there. It's like a piece of cloth that's kind of hanging on your neck. And I've tried a few. When I found these, I thought, oh my gosh. So I found the company and I ordered quite a few so that I could offer them to you too. And that's why I really like them. And then we've got arm gaiters. Don't forget the arm gaiters. Why do I wear arm gaiters? Because it protects my arm. And it protects from the sun and the UV. These are UV protection. And I, I really like them. And um, we can get sun damage. Yeah. And then, you know, like, mm, I mean, I do bump quite a bit. And as we get older, we can really kind of bruise. Just by looking at it, you can get a bruise on your arm. So, yeah, that's why I like um, the arm gaiters, too. And don't forget the exercise tapes. We um, So many of you have joined Mini Van Lee's Exercise Club, and you're exercising with me, and they're really uh, good videos. They're not expensive, and they're good, and they're not that difficult. Come on, let's go. I don't like to do things that difficult, okay? So I've devised them, in the ex and I these are exercises I do. This is the exact program I do, and that's how I stay fit. You say, oh, Mini Van Lee, you're so fit. Well, this is what I do, so go get them. And please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. I love you guys. Mwah. Love you guys so much. And I will, till next time. And I'll be in a new area. Bye. Hey, y'all. Let's get some exercising going. in there. Another one is a little bit of Pilates and the other one is dancing. Point your toes and lift up. This is your airplane. Bring it down. This is good for your lower back, for all the back muscles. This will... I'm good at pointing my toes. 